It has been nearly two weeks since Hamas launched a terror attack on Israel, killing more than 1,400 and injuring many thousands more. In the tense and chaotic days since, thousands of Palestinians have died and Americans in the Middle East have been trying to get back home. And today we're joined by someone who did just that, who, who got home, 17-year-old Josh Jury. Josh, you got home. We're happy you got home. Thank you for joining us this Thanks morning. Thanks for having me. First question. So how are you feeling now? Uh, you've been home for just a few days. You know, not only how are you feeling now, that's such a cliche journalistic question, but I think one of the most important ones, but also how do you feel now about what's happening in Israel, a place you just fled and got out of? Well, I consider Israel to be a second home. Um, so as grateful as I am to be here right now and to be safe and in the United States, I also, my heart's really breaking for Israel, the country and what it's going through. I still feel like really strong ties to the country with friends and family there. And I know that they're in this impossible situation where they're not able to get home. And I, I had that, that privilege to be back in the States and get back early. So you were, you were there for study abroad, Homewood Flossmoor student. Uh, so when were you there? When did you realize? And you were with, with a group of, of travel abroaders, right? I mean, this Yeah, all American teens. All American teens. Um, when did you realize this would be two Saturdays ago from, from this Saturday? When did you realize something was amiss? And then when did you realize something was really amiss? And then when did you realize, oh, holy cow, what's happening? Well, I'll start by saying this was all extremely unexpected. Mm -hmm. I mean, Friday before everything happened, my group was staying at a kibbutz just outside of Jerusalem. Wow. And it was the Jewish holiday Simchat Torah. And we were dancing and singing, and it was a really festive event. And then that night, we stayed at a hotel in downtown Jerusalem. And that morning, we woke up from the sound of the missile alert sirens. Um, I had never heard something like it in my life. I didn't know what it was. And then we were rushed down to a bomb shelter. And I remember it was extremely chaotic. Most people didn't even have shoes on. Everyone was in their pajamas. And when we got back down there, the way I found out what was going on was through a text from my mom saying, are you safe? Are you OK? And that's when I knew something was wrong if all the way back in the States, my mom knew what was going on before I did. Yeah, and your mom is uh, just, just off camera right here with us today. So how many buddies were you there with? And then how did you get out of there? I mean, it was, it was like literally escape from Israel, right, as soon right. as possible. But you didn't know if or when. Uh, how, how did that come about? Well, I mean, I was there with 30 other students in my program, um, but there were two other schools on campus. So culminated, we were about 100 students from the three schools. Mm. Is this all? All, all American teens, mm -hmm. like in different high school programs on the campus in Israel. Mm -hmm. um, and we were told it would probably take several weeks because the airlines were fully booked and getting a flight out with such a large group was going to be really difficult. Um, later on, though, about two days in, we had a late night meeting where they told us pack one bag and leave one bag in Israel. We're able to get a private charter out of Tel Aviv the next morning. So we all left a lot of our stuff, but we packed our bags really quickly and we got to Tel Aviv early the next day. And that in itself was extremely chaotic. Did you feel like, am I going to get out of here? No, I thought there's no way this plane is taking off because that was the closest any danger really got to us was at the airport. While we were in the airport, the, the sirens went on a few times and our phones would blow up with the alert saying, go to a shelter, there's missiles in your area. And we could actually hear the Iron Dome, which is Israel's missile defense system, intercepting missiles. missiles hundreds of feet away. And it just happened over and over and over to the point where we got in the shelter and we're supposed to be there for 10 minutes, minimal. Um, but they announced after several minutes, it's okay to go. 
um, we have like we have good security at the airport that will like block out missiles. And I thought, well, at least the flight's going to be delayed until after this cools down. But we boarded the plane, and you could feel the ground shaking, and then we took off. Oh, this gives me chills. So in Israel, people don't know what the Iron Dome is. That's like drones and missiles blowing up incoming missiles. Right. Um, and then you said you were also at a kibbutz when this all happened, and a kibbutz is where it happened. That's kind of an agricultural community. Yeah. Um, you know, when people see this interview uh, right now, live, uh, throughout the day and the days to come, uh, what, what message do you want to send? I want to send a message that this war is really powered by senseless hatred. I, I feel strongly that both innocent Israelis and innocent Palestinians alike are dying um, from the horrible Hamas terrorist attacks. And I think that at the end of this, I see, I see a solution for peace and coexistence in the future, and I, I really do hope to return to a more peaceful Israel someday in the future. Yeah, and your empathy uh, towards Palestinians is, is certainly a remarkable thing in drawing the delineation between Palestinians and Hamas. We it's are important happy. to differentiate. Yeah, we're happy you're here. Uh, welcome home, and uh, thank you for sharing your story. Josh Jury, 17 years old, remarkable story. Uh, happy you are back safe and sound.